Many of you have asked me about Jon Snow, one of Game of Thrones' key protagonists. Um, is he any good? Are his sword wielding skills decent? Is it okay to masturbate to his photos while holding a long claw replica screaming for the watch? Well, no. Jon Snow, as portrayed in the TV series, is not a good swordsman. Quite mediocre, to be honest, especially compared to other characters such as uh, Cilio or Sir Jorah. I mean, their actors and stunt doubles perform their choreographies much better. But that's okay, really. Fencing in movies isn't meant to be realistic. Its main purpose is to advance the plot and provide a feeling of conflict in a way that is accessible, easily readable for an average viewer. So fencing in movies is strongly slowed down and exaggerated, so that everyone can tell what's happening. Moreover, as I understand it, John is supposed to fight with a degree of ineptitude in the TV series. I mean, he's clearly portrayed as a brave but not very smart hotshot who uh, wins by sheer luck rather than any actual skills. I mean, uh, no one in their right mind would call him a decent sword fighter, right? So, I hope that concludes the topic. I'll go back to watching the TV series now. We just got to the point where uh, John and Ramsey face off uh, before the big battle. Exciting. I keep hearing stories about you, bastard. The way people in the North talk about you, you're the greatest swordsman who ever walked. <laughs> I keep hearing stories about you, bastard. The way people in the North talk about you, you're the greatest swordsman who ever walked. Swordsman who ever walked. So we want to fight like Jon Snow. I'll show you how. I even visited my brothers of the Night's Watch, who promised to provide me with a test subject for the movie. God's old and new. Is he slow or what? I mean, every fucking blow in the Game of Thrones, at least in seasons 1 through 4, even 5, uh, is so fucking slow. They look as if the actors had to struggle against some <laughs> thick jelly filling the air, while a proper sword strike is... Uh, I mean, they're pretty fast. So if you want to fight like Jon Snow, remember to never use the full potential of your body mechanics. Tense up and restrain your movements to make them look like this. Constant speed, no sudden acceleration. And if you think it's not that bad in the series, just watch this. It's an issue with most of the fighting in Game of Thrones. I mean, nobody utilizes the reach properly. Most cuts are done close to the body, leaving no space for further maneuver. It affects all aspects of combat, really. Because of that reach problem, the dynamics are low, the footwork is atrocious, and the telegraphing, it's, it's totally exaggerated, because from this position I can't really do much else. There is no place to maneuver, so I have to retract my blade in a very unnatural manner. It is especially evident in, the, in John's fight against the 
dual wielding fucking legend. I mean, uh, that guy being pretty slow and not very aggressive should be dead in seconds against the longsword. I mean, it's that easy to outmaneuver someone with uh, two shorter weapons who does not move. So if you want to fight like Jon Snow, strike with your arms bent and close the gap with awkward steps rather than proper cutting. And never employ the advantage of your longer weapon, because it's unfair. Longsword footwork, as described in early treatises, looks like this. The emphasis is on the strong passing step that augments the blow. As the art progressed, it was later changed into a more hybrid mode of movement, where passing steps were combined with shorter half steps for faster advance. In any case, longsword footwork uh, is meant to be as natural and unrestrained as possible. Nothing like Jon Snow's rather awkward mode of movement. Not only is it slow and unnatural, it also ruins his balance. You say, I'm making this up, that there is no way it can be right. I'm afraid the truth might be quite brutal. <laughs> That's what you can do. Let's get this out of the way. I know telegraphing is supposed to make combat more readable for your average Joe, but when it steals all the dynamic, something's clearly wrong. Telegraphing in the Game of Thrones is always so profound, they always retract the blades so far behind their backs. While even in stage combat, telegraphing that is understated and natural looks better as it conveys a feeling of smartness and skill. Wanna do it like Jon Snow? Here you go. Set up for every blow so that it can be seen from a mile away. Not just every strike. Go over the top with thrusting too. The point is the center and the core of all techniques. At least the medieval masters said so. Why is it then that in Game of Thrones we see next to no use of the sword's point, and even if there is a thrust, it is done in the most crude manner. A standalone stab that is also telegraphed to the extreme. You see, the manuals of the German school of longswords suggest that maneuvering with a point is a prevalent form of play in fencing. In fact, one of the most common tactics was opening with a sudden strike and then seeking to thrust the point into one of the opponent's openings. But if you want to fight like Jon Snow, forget that the sword is pointing and just bash like a club against the opponent's equally unpointy weapon. You know what is the first target you would consider in a life or death duel? The hands. The open, vulnerable hands that are also the most crucial part of your body in combat. Obviously, you can't fight without the ability to grasp a weapon. Why is it then that in Game of Thrones you never see attacks to the hands, the most vulnerable, the closest target available? It is especially evident in fights against axemen, where the hands are seemingly off limits. The easiest way to beat such an axeman would be to chop off his hand. Well, in the Game of Thrones, they usually go for the weapon itself, for whatever reason, or the upper arm, or nothing at all. What would John do? Attack their weapons, of course. Or try to reach targets such as the upper arm, or not even try to hit anything. All while ignoring the vulnerable hands, of course. That is a major issue with pretty much all combat in Hollywood. It is turn-based, like chess, while actual fighting is real-time, like fucking StarCraft. 
in a fencing duel, you don't wait for your opponent's action to be over before you respond. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. That turn-based mode. Instead, you try to interrupt his action, to thwart his tempo, his timing, to outplay him, deceive him, all in real time. Of course, it's much harder to choreograph things that way. A turn-based system is much more feasible, it's easier to work with, both for the coordinator and the stuntman. But it's possible to choreograph things in a real-time way, and it will make a world of a difference once it's applied to Hollywood. Want to do it like Jon Snow? Kindly wait for your enemy to finish his action. Only then you're allowed to retaliate. But not too swiftly, of course. Because we're in Game of Thrones. And we're supposed to be slow. Boring. Of course, it's not all hopelessly bad. I mean, there is a steady improvement in speed and quality of fights as of season 6. Uh, Jon Snow of season 6 is much faster than his season 1 version, which tells us there is someone working to improve things in the Game of Thrones. And to that person, I wish the best of luck. As always, thanks for watching and keep slaying. Hunting wand wings. Wow, the wings. The closest, most vulnerable target. Zmałem! Żaden! Musisz wcześniej, musisz dałem mu znać. Musisz wcześniej, bo. Well, actual combat is real time, like fucking Starcraft. Ja tylko dzielimy.